sculpting the ear butts on a whitetail. And uh, we're now, right now we're just applying clay to, uh, to make the mass up the ear butt, and then we're going to sculpt in the uh, individual muscles of the ear butt. And we decided just for demonstration purposes to do one ear forward, one ear back, because there are slight differences the way the muscles bunch. And uh, so we're working. Mike, so tell us a little bit about where you're from and how long you've been in taxidermy. I've been, uh, I'm from uh, Wisconsin, Neshkoro, Wisconsin, and I'm, uh, I've been doing full taxidermy full time for 42 years. Oh, wow, fantastic. <laughs> that means I'm older than dirt. <laughs> well, Douglas Hawthorne says nice, so he's impressed with your amount of experience here and we are setting earbuds here with Mike and uh, as he said he's just forming the clay we're gonna do one ear forward and one ear back for the purposes of this demonstration we are live in the Matuska booth at the 2019 World Taxidermy Championships and so what do you got going on here now Mike well we're just still making massing up the earbud to the point where it sticks to the form once we get to that point we also, we also demonstrated at first was how to set the uh, depth of the antlers because if you don't set the antlers at the right depth, the, um, um, it's like the foundation of a house. The, um, uh, if, you, if the footings are crooked, the rest of the house is crooked. So we got to start out first with the depth of the antlers, get those set right, then we can go on to uh, sculpting the earbuds. Okay, can you just give us a quick recap of how you determined how to set the depth of the antlers? Okay, well what we did was, um, the first, first thing we did was we made a, took a sharpie and we made a mark uh, on the uh, wing of the nostril. And if you extend that line with a straight edge, if you extend that line from the wing of the nostril through the front corner of the eye, the burr of the antler is going to be real close to that line. If it's an inch high or an inch low, that's too much. If it's within a eighth of an inch, you're, you should be fine, either lower or higher. But if it's too extreme, you're going to ca it's gonna cause a problem. So then when we get to the ear butt, we made a, a notch or line with the Sharpie at the front corner of the nostril and we extended that line with a straight edge to the trough underneath the eye orbit and that forms the uh, usually the bottom extreme of the ma the major portion of the muscle of the earbud we have to blend it into the side of the head but uh, we also have in our uh, competitors choice sculptures we also have the hole located for the ear canal so that way we don't our ear isn't too far forward or too far back or too far too high or too low so we we made sure that when we sculpted the forms with a skull that we put a uh, we didn't lose the location of the ear canal all right so we're just uh getting some mass to the uh, ear butt and then we're gonna sculpt in the uh, and usually by sculpting in the, the ear muscles, the muscles on top of the ear butt, we usually uh, just add some clay, the thickness of the muscle. And one thing I found that over the years, if you make the ear butt just a little bit harsher, the musculature a little bit harsher, it tends to, uh, it doesn't get lost when you put the hide on. We also, the muscles of the, of the ear butt, they, they, when they come off of the ear, like on this ear's back one, when the muscles come off the ear, it goes down and it actually turns and loops up to the ear butt. A lot of guys make the mistake of making their ear butt flow right to the bottom of the burr, and that's not correct. You have to come down, It has the, the hide has to turn and crawl up the pedicle and get uh, tuck underneath the burr. So you wanna make sure you do that 
but you have to leave a little bit of space there for the hide to, to go in there. And uh, I'm using critter clay as our medium for the ear buffs. And I use a water bottle every once in a while and spritz it just to get it a little slipperier so I can smooth it out. Because it looks a little rough right now. By the time we get done, they'll, they'll look all nice and pretty. And, and then we'll put a, put a hide on this, on this deer at, an, at a later date. And uh, it'll hide a lot of the clay work I did. But it'll also be, the ear butts won't be too big, too small. And they should be in the right location. And sculpted on the back of the form is the, where the muscle comes down and attaches to the back of the skull and, the back, and, and down into the neck. And I can use that reference point when I clay up my, my muscles of the ear that come across the ear butt and down and attach right here. And both sides are there's a center line. I try to main, keep maintaining that center line. So there's there's a, a slight depression because we, I want my earbuds to come off the ear. I want them to go down. Oh, this will be a low turn. spot, and then come back it's up and go yeah. flow into this ear. We want to we want to develop some flow. Okay. But I didn't fool with them, but. Your needle's dirty. Like, like you want to lament through some steel wool? Okay. So how do you know if it's too much clay, too much building up? Well, Where's the happy medium? What, what I've done is, over the years, I've taken <laughs> measurements of ear butts, and with the hide on, I've always Stuck known that uh, the height of the ear butt is never bigger than two and, five, two and a half to two and five eighths. Two and three quarters would be the maximum distance on a really big buck. So if I know the the size of the buck, the nose to eye measurement, I can I can uh, tell how big the um, the ear butt should be. But the biggest thing is is if we're connecting the muscles from one point to another, um, it usually comes out pretty close. I don't do well with waters. I don't clean my stuff and then it's like how much. And I, I'm always double checking my reference. I have several different uh, types of reference um, ear butt reference casts off of uh, off of a deer. Obviously, it's not a live deer, but it's uh, so I have to uh, I have to allow for post mortem sag. And uh, but we're always. Uh, we're always referring back to the uh, reference to try and get as, as good a product as we can. We'll figure it out. No latex here? No latex here. No latex. So what do you find in your can't live without? Anything? Try it again. Hell, I haven't been able to get through here. So you're not supposed to. So I'll just continue uh, stop, working. And... So now I want to start uh, adding the, the muscles to the surface of the ear butt to try and get it to uh, look like what I'm look what what my cast tell me. And then once you get the numb muscles to look the way that you want them to look, then what's the next step after that? What I once I get them sculpted to the where the way I like it, I I want to let them dry and stiffen up, and I will. Uh, I will remove these, the ear, the ear liner and the ear butt in one piece, insert it into the hide, put it on the form, and uh, um, the ear butts will be basically dry, so it takes a lot uh, less time to dry, okay. which is kind of one of the advantages. And is there a particular ear mold? Form that you like to use more so than others on your mounts. Or? Uh, these deer are, are the competitors' choice sculptures that I sculpted with Brian Olson and uh, Pat Wagner, and uh, they're the they're the forms I pr I prefer to use because they tend to save me at least an hour in mounting time because they fit. These are sculpted for mainly Midwestern deer, but uh, they'll work a 
where they'll work for pretty much any deer of, of the same size. I use them on Canadian bucks, I use them on Midwestern bucks, I use them on uh, uh, bucks from uh, out west of, of a similar size. All right, guys, and there you have it. So we were looking at um, mounting earbuds with Mike Yeska, and we are going to have more to come. Shane and